Hello everyone. I use Zoom for teaching in my online classes. I also use Zoom for creating video messages for my students. My colleagues encouraged me to describe this process to help others who might be interested in doing this as well. When I searched for using Zoom to make a screencast, I noticed that there are many blogs and sites that provide tips for doing this. In this video, I will describe the steps that I use for creating my video messages. First, I create a script and decide what I plan to discuss. This is an example of the script I'm using to create this video. Next, I select visuals that can support my points. So if I'm discussing a particular concept, then I might have a visual that I've created, or I might go to a particular website or link to a PDF document that accompanies what it is that I'm, I'm going to be talking about. Once I have all the visuals uh, ready and open on my desktop, then that's when I start Zoom. So I go into Zoom um, using the icon on my desktop to begin the program or using my web browser, so however you normally start Zoom. I don't invite anyone else into the meeting and I usually lock it as well to make sure that no one else enters while I'm creating the recording. I also like to turn my video on and I'll just do that really quickly here. Um, just at the beginning of the video and I wave and say hello um, so that the students can see me at the start. But I also um, try not to keep it on too long as I know that that will make the file size uh, a little bit larger. And so to keep the file size manageable, I usually keep the video off. Okay, so when I'm ready, then I click on the um, more button on the navigation bar and that allows me to start the recording. You can record on your computer or to the cloud. I generally record to my own computer. You'll notice that once you start the recording, you'll see um, a recording icon or navigation at the top of your screen. So you'll see a little red um, circle that indicates that your recording is on and you can also pause or stop the recording in that same location. I like to pause the recording um, when I'm moving between visuals. So I will use the share screen um, button to move between different applications and screens. And when I'm doing that in the middle of the recording, I will pause it so that um, it doesn't take so much time to go between the visuals. I also like to pause if I just need to stop and take a breath and slow down a little bit, then it makes it a little bit easier uh, to pause. Okay, and when I'm finished uh, my message, then I stop the recording and I end the meeting for all. And so once I end the meeting, that indicates to Zoom that it's time to render my recording. And so after you end the meeting, you'll see um, a pop-up window that will show you that it's converting your meeting recording. And it takes a little bit of time depending, of course, on the length of your recording. So once that's finished, then um, your window will show where the files are being stored. And you can see that uh, an audio file has been created as well as video file. Usually if I'm sharing with the students just audio and I just want to share a podcast, then I might select the audio file. And if I want to share the audio and video, if I have visuals in my presentation, then I share the uh, MP4 file. And what I like to do before I leave um, the, the location, I rename the file so that I know what, um, what the content was. So in this case, I'll name it week two message so that I know it's the message I recorded for week two. Finally, I'm ready to share the output with my students. So I, I like to use the learning management system that um, my students have access to. 
I can post a news item for the students and so that they can see the video message. I can also send out a note via email to all of the students and provide the link to the message as well as um, a copy of my script. Some students may prefer to review the script and the video, so I like to provide both. Um, the video can be watched more than one time if needed. And so I find it's a great way of communicating messages um, to my students. My final tip that I'd like to share with you is uh, creating one take productions. Now I created, or I talked about this in an article in the EdCan network um, about creating one take productions for student feedback. And so when I create video messages for the students, I talk about using this particular approach. So this means I usually record the video one time and I don't worry about stumbling over words or any background noises or other interruptions. It shouldn't take hours to create a video message, otherwise you probably won't do it very often. So I encourage you to be yourself. Don't worry about creating a polished or you know, theater ready production. And most importantly, have fun when you're doing this. Thank you for viewing this video. I hope this was helpful and can be used to help communicate messages or short lessons with your students. Good luck.